Como Rebbe asks how to begin reading classics like Dickens, having said that it has an ambiguous vocab. Well, I'm not quite sure what the second part of that question is about, but let's just take the first part. How do you begin reading classics like Dickens? And maybe this is saying because some of the vocabulary will be difficult. Charles Dickens or any other any other classic classic literature. If you pick up classics and you start reading them, you might immediately notice a hey, this is different from movies and TV shows. This is different from how people speak now. What's going on? Should I read this? So I think that's the first question. Should I read stuff that is not modern? Should I read stuff that doesn't sound like how people communicate nowadays? And I think the simple answer to that is yes, absolutely. We learn, or rather we should learn, much more than we actually need to use. And the reason we do that is what we can and in fact do actually use is only a subset of what we know. So you have to learn way more than you're ever going to use because then at least the percentage of what you can and do use is larger. I don't know what the exact percentage is, but the more you do, the more you know, the more you hear, the more you read, the more knowledge you have of any language, let's say in this case English, the better you're going to be able to use that language, to make connections, to pull out a word that's exactly the right word that you need. Now, you will never use all of the words that you know. But if it is a percentage, let's say it's a percentage, we only use 20% of what we know. Well, if you know 6,000 words and you're only using 20% of those 6,000 words, which is probably about right, I don't know if that's right, well, that's not a lot, <laughs> right? So you're when you speak, when you communicate, it's going to sound simple. But if you know 50,000 words, which is a lot, then you're going to be able to, 20% of that 50,000 words, you're going to be able to express yourself very articulately. You're going to be able to, when you need things, pull them out and, oh, I remember I learned that phrase. That's exactly what I want to say, right? So, I believe in having a very strong foundation in a knowledge of the language you want to use, which includes a lot of language that you're never going to actually use. Knowing it is useful. That's why we have to read classics in school, like Charles Dickens. We have to read uh, Fitzgerald. We have to read Hemingway. We have to read all of that stuff in school because it's part of the mesh that is the language, and you don't know when you're going to be using that. You won't even be choosing it consciously, but it'll it'll bubble up every now and then, and you'll you'll access it in some way. Now, what about actually reading these uh, these books? Do you need to look up every single word you don't know? If that's not your goal, then just absorb the language as long as you understand what's going on as long as you understand generally what is being said, right? Then that's fine. If you must know every word and your goal is just learning words, okay, make sure you learn them in context. Look up each one. Make sure you understand it clearly. Make sure you check the usage. Practice making an example or two, right? But uh, I would not recommend that all the time because it's going to be very tiring. I believe the best way is to try to enjoy the book. Try to enjoy Charles Dickens. Try to enjoy Hemingway. Try to enjoy, if you maybe read an English translation of a Russian novel, right? Yeah, great. Get into the story. That's going to keep you reading. That's going to keep you going, right? And when you don't understand this sentence, then look up the word that you don't know. Research that word just so you can understand it. If you're missing meaning and what the characters are talking about because of that, uh, then yeah, yeah, start looking stuff up. But if it gets too far and you have to, you find you have to look up almost every word in order to even understand what's going on, 
then maybe you've selected a book that's too difficult. Now, I think most of you can probably understand Sherlock Holmes, Charles Dickens, great. Philosophy, maybe more difficult. It depends on your level, of course. But choose something that feels a little challenging, but, and you don't know all the words, but you still feel like you understand what's going on. You still feel like you understand what the characters are saying. If you're there and you can pretty much understand it, maybe that's Harry Potter for you, maybe that's Charles Dickens for you, or Sherlock Holmes for you. If you feel you can generally understand and you're enjoying the story, perfect, perfect. If you understand every single word, maybe too easy. If you can't understand anything and it's every sentence is a major project, find something easier, okay? That is my recommendation about reading classic literature, or in fact, any literature at all. Music